best animal friendships in the wild. Good friendships aren't limited to species. Some have dogs, some have cats, others have fish or turtles or birds. Whatever it is, our planet has proven that friendship transcends species, and it isn't just the case with humans. Many animals make friends outside their species too, and it's a little one-sided and other times it's perfect. Here are some of the best animal friendships in the wild. Have you ever seen a buffalo with a bird on its back? You might think that the bird is sucking the blood out of buffalo skin as many reports have suggested, but there are always two sides to the story. Bubalus bubalis is the scientific name for the buffalo, which is a member of the bovine family. This species has descended from the Arni or wild Indian buffalo across southern Asia. Buffaloes are peaceful creatures in the wild and can live for a long time. Buffaloes 18 years or older may have calves that can be used for domestic farm tasks for up to 20 years. Although it is in tropical locations, these animals are less heat tolerant than other bovines. Buffaloes must have access to water and shade to survive. Milking animals must consume plenty of water to avoid dehydration, which can occur at any moment. The buffalo's best friend is the cattle egret, a species of bird originating from Africa and later expanding to Asia, Europe, and, and every other continent, excluding Antarctica. Their name comes from their behavior of chasing cattle and other livestock and feeding the insects that escape from the grass whenever these creatures walk over it. They are carnivores that primarily feed on insects. For much of the year, the cattle egret is white all over, but during the mating season, the feathers on the breast and head will become a slight orange hue. Now, how do buffalo and egret make a good bond? The egret springs up among feeding buffalo. As the buffalo moves through the thick grass, it catches grasshoppers that jump out of the way. And this is where things start to get fascinating. The egret is frequently spotted resting on the buffalo's back. It's not only about finding a more convenient mode of transportation. The bird snatches insects off the cattle's carcass. While snatching bugs for meals, it's also assisting its buffalo companion by removing parasites that might cause sickness. Parasites can transfer several diseases from one animal to another, so buffaloes should stay safe from them. Another friendship that we admire from the wild comes not from the dense forest, but the deep ocean. We are talking about cleaner shrimp and fish. These shrimp, also known as Pacific Cleaner Shrimp, Scarlet Cleaner Shrimp, and Skunk Cleaner Shrimp, play an important role in coral reef systems. Their popular name comes from the fact that a substantial amount of their meal consists of dead cells and parasites that they extract from fish. They will set up a grooming center on the reef or rock and wait for fish to visit to cleanse dead cells and parasites. Kind of like a spa or salon under the sea. These vividly colored shrimp have a red stripe on either side of their body divided by a white band running through the middle of their back. It has 10 legs, just like species of the order Decapoda. Now, cleaner shrimp's best friends are fish, and unlike mammals, fish have cold blood. It indicates that they will not have a consistent core body temperature and that their surroundings considerably affect their temperature. The regular fish have a spine and fins, and most have gills for breathing and scales covering their bodies. With that said, there are over 22,000 recognized fish species. There can be several diseases in the ocean, and to defend themselves from infection, fish generate a layer of mucus over their scales. Bacteria and viruses are trapped and immobilized by the mucus, preventing them from reaching the fish's body. This layer also reduces friction, helping the fish to glide through the water more effortlessly. Now, what makes a cleaner shrimp and a fish BFFs? Cleaner shrimp are great at making new pals. Around coral reefs, these crustaceans form up cleaning stations as we mentioned before. A station may hold up to 25 shrimp. Then other fish pass over, allowing the shrimp to pluck parasites off their bodies. The fish are clean and the shrimp receive a complimentary dinner from their visitors. The perfect friendship. Another pair of friends we have on our list is an unusual one. It's hard to imagine an apex predator having a sweet friendship with anybody. But of course, the animal kingdom is always full of surprises. Crocodiles are enormous prehistoric looking reptiles located in the world's warmest tropical areas. There are 23 species in the crocodilian family, 14 of which are typically known as crocodiles. Crocodiles have existed in various forms on Earth for 65 to 245 million years. These giant reptiles are the apex predators, which is critical to their long-term survival. 
crocodiles varied in diameter from the African dwarf crocodile, which may grow to be more than 6 feet long, to the saltwater crocodile, which can grow to be more than 20 feet long. Crocodiles have broad, big bodies, short legs, and long muscular tails. Their skin is thick and leathery with skeletal plate-shaped scales. Their teeth are all sharp and cone-shaped, but on the outside of their mouths. Crocodile skulls are long and straight with the eyes and nose positioned on top. Crocodiles rarely ever stop growing. This means the older the crocodile is, the bigger it becomes. Some kinds can even live up to 75 years. That's almost as much as humans, so you've got a lifelong best friend right there. That is, if you can become their friend. It's a rare occurrence, but it's not so rare for the Egyptian plovers. People even called it the crocodile bird. Chloeanus aegyptus, popularly known as the crocodile bird, is a shorebird in the Glarolidae family. The Egyptian plover is a distinct and easily identified species. The adults are around 19 to 21 centimeters in length and have a black crown, back, eye patch, and breast stripe. The remaining portion of the head is white. The entire upper part plumage is blue-gray with orange underparts and longish legs are blue-gray. Apart from its beauty, it's so much more impressive in flight with the black head and back contrasted with the gray upper parts and wings. The flying feathers are dazzling white with a black band running across them. The flying bird is white from below except for an orange belly and a black wing bar. According to the Greek historian Herodotus, crocodiles let the birds into their jaws to eliminate residues and parasites from their gums and teeth. It's like having a live toothbrush. In return, the birds get to prey on bugs near these crocodiles without getting, well, Hunted. The last one for today's video is the beloved fish from the movie Finding Nemo and Sea Anemones. The clownfish is a kind of fish that dwells in salt water, and they're also called anemone fish. Clownfish are neon orange fish with three white stripes, one at the skull, center, and tail. If you look carefully, you will find thin black lines around the white markings. They also have a tiny black circular line on the ends of their fins. Clownfish can reach lengths of 2 to 5 inches, with the males often much smaller in diameter than females. They also come in a variety of other colors like blue and yellow. Clownfish and sea anemones have what is called a symbiotic interaction. This means that they profit from residing within the sea anemone, and the sea anemone benefits from the clownfish's existence. They are the only fish that can survive in sea anemones without being hurt by their tentacles. Clownfish are very energetic and destructive fish. You could say they clown around a lot. That said, they also guard their territories and the sea anemone. Clownfish feed on the anemone and algae remnants from fish, and copepods, isopods, and zooplankton are among the leftovers. Clownfish have several ocean predators, but human beings are their main threat. Just recall the Finding Nemo movie. Only 10 of them over a thousand different varieties of anemones can house these fish. Many individuals mistakenly place the fish in a tank with the incorrect anemone, which causes the fish problems in the long run. They will end up surviving only three to five years in such conditions, while in the wild, clownfish can live for six to ten years. Talking about sea anemones, they are predatory marine creatures of the Actinearia order. Because of their colorful appearance, they are called, after the anemone, a terrestrial blooming plant. A typical sea anemone is a solitary polyp with its base connected to a hard surface. However, other species dwell in soft silt and a few float near the water surface. The polyp has a columnar stem capped by an oral disc surrounded by tentacles and has a central mouth. Tentacles can be retracted inside the body cavity or extended to capture food passing by. As fans of Finding Nemo know, clownfish are immune to anemone stings because of the unique mucus that shields their skin. That is why clownfish may live inside the tentacles of sea anemones, and the small fish contributes to the well-being of its home sweet home. The clownfish cleans the anemone and even drives predators away from it. Again, it is a give-and-take relationship, and we admire it. What do you think of these friendships? Don't they all have the cutest bond ever? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.